Previously on Maple Story the Novel, Sacred Tears. What does that even mean? Ultimate light, light can, can only be found in ultimate darkness? Get this cart moving! There are too many ahead of us! The conference is still in progress, but you can be allowed in. Would you happen to be Halsar? And while I do need help with it, it does not solve the larger problem. I don't like riddles. And now the continuation of Chapter 17, Part 2. Have you ever heard of the one called the White Mage? Halsar asked. Tahir searched his memory for mention of the name, but nothing came to mind. That name doesn't sound familiar. He was said to have been a great mage, helping people whenever possible. He was a mage who could use light as his power. It was said he could even touch the sun and not burn. He could stop these creatures from making trouble for all of us merchants. But no one knows where to find him, or even if he exists. Some say they've met him, a few even living here in Arentia. But so much time has passed that many consider him a mere folktale. The mention of light made Tahir sneer to himself, still holding on to the rage he harbored toward that sect. And you want me to go and find him. If this man is as great as you say he is, why would he want to work for you? Why would he even consider it? For something as sweet as the clink of money, anyone would do anything. Wealth is a weakness shared by all, <laughs> even myself. <laughs> Halsar laughed, but Tahir kept a straight face. <clears throat> if you find him, bring him back here, and I will pay you three times your weight in gold. Here is a down payment for supplies and traveling expenses. Halsar chortled, holding out a large bag of coins and dropping it into Tahir's hand. It was at least twice what Hilda had paid him, and he still had most of that on him. But searching for someone like this white mage without any leads could be a difficult and long journey. Very well, I accept. Payment will only come if and when I find him and bring him back here to you. Then let it be, Halsar bellowed, holding out his hand as Tahir shook it firmly, then signed a contract the merchant drew up. Tahir then took a day to gather supplies, ensuring he had food and water to last at least a week's worth. However, it came at quite a cost since the foodstuffs were carefully rationed. As he gathered supplies, he made small talk with the townspeople, finding out who it was that had supposedly met this elusive white mage and where he might be found. Some of the stories he heard said he was a lover of the last fairy in Usoria, living near a massive tree in the continent's center. Others said that he had traveled to the forests of Elinda, west of that central tree. Still others said that he had disappeared into a wooded area near the East Dragon Forest, it may take him a whole year to search that much ground alone. Then again, this is for the greater good, he muttered, just as the sun was coming up the next day. He put on his backpack, locked the door to his house, and set out for the rumored central tree. The food he had purchased would be enough to see him to a trading post to the north, but it would be a lonely journey. Luckily, there were other merchants or travelers at the post who were heading in the direction Tahir was going. While traveling with them, he asked about their knowledge of the White Mage. 
Some offered information directing him toward the East Dragon Forest. Most only repeated legends or told new ones that he hadn't heard yet. The central tree left him speechless at its size, learning it was said to be the home of the deity of life, Haim. With some careful wording and a little bit of luck, he found Haim himself. After some conversation, Tahir found that Haim personally knew the White Mage, confirming many of the leads he had heard. It was to the East Dragon Forest that he would need to go. The White Mage has quite the lofty ambition in healing the world. If he succeeds, it will be a better life for us all, the deity grinned. So the rumors are true, Tahir muttered, holding his chin in thought. That they are. Then this white mage really does exist in the East Dragon Forest? Oh, yes, very much so. The last I've seen, he made his home within a section of it called the Forest of Peace. Haim smiled, seeing that Tahir looked to want something more. It only took a glance to know what was on Tahir's mind. I can see you're holding on to something. Please, don't- If you are the deity of life, then I have a request to make of you. Haim sighed heavily. He could see the brokenness this man carried, but there was nothing he could do about it. I'm sorry, Tahir, but I can't. You don't even know what I'm going to ask you! You want me to bring your wife and daughter back to life, right? I am sorry, but that is something I cannot do. And why not? You're the deity of life! It's yours to command! If it were within a short time after their deaths, I could. But many years have passed since then, and their life forces have been absorbed into the Erdus flow. They are far beyond me now. Then give them a new life force! It can't be that hard for you to do! Haim lowered his brow, a spark of something deep in his eyes igniting and a presence weighing on Tahir, making him step back slightly. Yes, I could create a new life force, but they would no longer be your wife and daughter. In body, yes but they would have no memory or love for you. Could you endure that? Could you survive watching your wife fall in love with another man? Could you endure your daughter never acknowledging your love for her? Tahir's whole being slumped, imagining what it would be like to have them revived but not returned to him. And why did you let them die in the first place? Tahir asked with a growl. It was Haim's turn for his being to slump, falling back into a chair made of branches. The power that took their lives is beyond my ability. There is a darkness in this world, and the White Mage is the one trying to heal it. I'm sorry, but it is true, he offered, reaching out for his shoulder when Tahir shrugged him off, glaring to the east. The answers you seek lie with the White Mage in the Forest of Peace. Haim finally said, watching as Tahir stomped away, his fists tight as he returned to the merchant's staging area, looking for someone traveling to the East Dragon Forest. For the next three months, Tahir offered his blade in service to many merchants and travelers heading in the general direction he aimed for. Many times, his travels and contracts would bring him close to his goal, only to take him away again. At last, he stepped to the forest's edge in the abandoned city of Lifra. So many travels had brought him to this point, as well as many stories from many people about the White Mage helping them in their time of need. Perhaps there is more to this than mere legend, Tahir chuckled to himself. Regardless of his arrival, there was still a vast forest to search according to the maps that he brought with him, and that could take years. Time he felt he didn't have. There was also the reminder of his arm as he reached up to absently massage it. Over time, he had been applying the salve to ease the itching but the antidote he had received either wasn't working or there was more damage to his arm than he realized. 
Every time he pulled away the bandage to apply more salve, he would notice there were wet flakes of something within the wound. Sometimes, he swore he could see tiny wisps of ash drifting up from the wound. It may not be good, but it wasn't slowing him down either. I should start by looking for that fairy that was his lover. She might know where to find him, he thought, trying to determine where a fairy like that would even be. Every fairy had been exterminated well before he was born. At least, that is what he thought. For three days, he searched for any sign to indicate where this fairy was, finally leaning against an old and split tree to catch his breath. No sooner had he begun to lean against it than it moved away. Light began to emanate from cracks in the wood, giving the whole place a chilling blue-green glow. What is your business in the forest, human? A low, resonant voice asked. The tree turned around, revealing glowing eyes. Tahir backed away in a leap, drawing his dagger ready to fight. I come seeking the white mage. I was told that I might find him here. The tree creature creaked as it turned to face him full on, its long arms swinging to the front where carvings created a vest-like design on its body. It has been many moons since I have heard that name. But, alas, you will not find him here. Then can you tell me where I can find him? Tahir asked, his hand still shaking, barely holding on to his dagger. The last I spoke to him, he had moved into the Forest of Peace. It is there that almost no light shines and where he said it was best to study darkness. The creature creaked, pointing east through the trees that had grown tightly together, even more so further in. Thank you. I shall be on my way then, Tahir answered, poking himself twice before finally being able to sheath his dagger. The creature said nothing, only watching as he moved through the trees. Three more days passed of him trekking through the forest, but his going was slow, and he began to see creatures shrouded in black mist. They smelled the same as the creatures he had encountered in the desert, but these were made of inanimate objects. Rocks, trees, mosses, and mushrooms. What could make something like this? He thought, trying to avoid them. Some of the creatures found him, instantly becoming violent. After fighting them off, he began noticing the dull ache in his arm was becoming more and more of a throbbing pain. Tearing off the bandage, Tahir was surprised to see the flesh around the wound had become black. The rest was cherry red, swollen and beginning to ooze pus. From inside the wound, black flakes of ash began to float out. Taking a flint and steel out of his bag, Tahir lit a small branch and held it to his dagger, heating the blade to cut away the blackened flesh. He would also dig out pockets of wet ash and sear the bleeding flesh closed. It took a few rounds of heating, digging, and pressing, but eventually he cut it all off. After tearing off a clean strip of cloth from one of his spare shirts, he wrapped the wound once again. The flesh was still tender, but at least now it didn't ache as badly. On through the forest he trekked, miles upon miles behind him with unknown miles before him. More and more of the ghoulish creatures began to appear around him, and each time he would fight them off. But the further Tahir traveled, the more he began to feel an anger burning within him. Thoughts of his wife and daughter came to him as each swing of his dagger became harder and wilder against the underbrush and against the creatures he faced. Sweat ran from his brow, running into his eyes until he couldn't tell which was sweat and which were tears. Still the miles passed, still the creatures came, and still the rage and sorrow welled within him. The burning in his arm eventually returned, this time even more intense than it had been before. He was about to try and cut away the blackened flesh again, 
but as he worked, the flesh would just begin to darken as quickly as he cut it away. Ash started to constantly float up from the wound, slowly infesting the rest of his arm as he crawled through the underbrush. Eventually, he lost the ability to even lift his arm, as whatever was eating away at his muscle burned away enough that he could see his bone. Blood began to leak from the surrounding skin as an aggressive infection spread up his arm. As he walked, his steps became heavy, dragging along the ground, catching on vines and branches. With each step, his feet became heavier and his head lighter, swaying as he walked until he finally collapsed to the ground. He tried to sit himself upright, but all the strength in his body had since left him. Listen, am I going to die here? <laughs> How pathetic, he thought, reaching up to his chest and holding up the locket, popping open the cover to see his wife and daughter again. Solaire. Flora. he whispered, as his blurring vision caught sight of another shadowy creature coming towards him, fangs dripping with thick black liquid. Closing his eyes, he waited for the creature's fangs to plunge into his skin. Instead, he heard a loud hum blow past him, annihilating the creature in a blaze of white light. Tahir was too weak to turn his head, but as his awareness faded, he saw what appeared to be a man in a black robe walk up to him. Please, sir, I need to find the white man. Tahir passed out, dropping his head to the ground. The man smirked, leaning down and pulling the black and silver cloak from around him to use as a blanket for the man on the ground. Tahir stirred to awareness with a slow groan. His arm still had a dull ache in it, but he couldn't feel the hole that was in it before. Opening his eyes more, he found himself in what appeared to be an expensive-looking room. He was dressed in clean linens, and his clothes lay beside his bed, washed and folded neatly on the floor. He was about to leave the soft bed when the door opened and a man with long white hair stepped through carrying a tray laden with bottles of colored liquid, herbs, cloth, and a mortar and pestle. Oh, you're awake. That is a good sign. If I haven't found you when I did, I doubt you would have survived the night. What's your name? And what were you doing so deep in the dragon forest? The man asked. Tahir eyed him carefully, noting that his dagger was with his clothes, but the man seemed unarmed, so perhaps there was no real danger to be worried about. My name is Tahir, and I am searching for someone, he answered, looking more around the room. This is a rather lavish room for someone living alone, Tahir said with a snippet of disdain. The man smiled taking a bottle and pouring a clear liquid into the mortar before adding a bit of crushed herbs to it and mixing the two. Oh, but I am not alone. There are many clerics and acolytes here with me as well. It is my home, yes, but it is far from being only that. Who are you looking for, if I may ask? The man asked, as he ground the herbs more vigorously. Tahir looked around the room and more thoroughly, noticing a symbol on the wall opposite the bed on which he rested. I've come here searching for someone called the White Mage. Reliable sources tell me he lives in these woods. Looking more closely at the symbol, he recognized it as the crest of the sect who he had so hated. The Aurora. You wouldn't happen to know where I could find him, would you? Cleric of the Aurora? Tahir asked with contempt. The man let a dull smile appear on his face as he approached Tahir, took the bandage from his arm and replaced it with a mixture-soaked cloth. Tahir noticed that his wound was nearly healed, save for what appeared to be a small circular scar. I am Dane, leader of the Order of Aurora, also known as the White Mage. Welcome, Tahir. 